the Jeff Fishing Vlog. Today I want to talk to you about uh, one of my favorite styles of fishing, which is catfishing from the bank. And I, and I have two main rigs that I set up, which one is a Carolina style, and one, you know, these are both tight lining, and one is uh, like a drop shot style for catfishing. And, and I don't know a better way of putting it. It, it really is just a, a drop shot type rig. Now, that being said, when you are on the when you are on the river and you're fishing from the bank and maybe you have a little bit of slack water maybe the water isn't as strong that day one of uh one of the things i really enjoy doing when i can get away with it is just putting a split shot on my line with my bait you know about two feet away from that split shot man whenever whenever i can get away with doing that and not having to put on all these different rigs you know less is more you know there's no doubt about that so here we go so the first one i'm going to show you is the carolina rig style and the first part of this process is putting on the egg sinker then the next thing we we want to do is we're going to put on a bead and what the bead does it's going to protect our knot from that egg sinker banging around all right so we got that on and then we're gonna go ahead and tie on a swivel, okay? And here, I'm gonna just use the simple fisherman's knot. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That right through there, pinch it, bring it through. Whenever we're tying these knots, Always put your little lube on there. And I, and I like to have plenty of uh, cutting devices with me, be it scissors, knives, fingernail clippers. And you gotta watch these tag ends. They'll get hung up on any type of grass and stuff really easy. All right, so that's the first part. Now for the second part of the Carolina rig, we're gonna go ahead and tie our knot right here. Now, we're tying quite a few knots to, to accomplish this rig. And just remember, the weakest part of your line is your knot. So every one of these knots has to be perfect and they have to not have the burnt line on them. So, so we wanna pay attention to every one of these knots. There we go. And we also want to pay attention to these tag lines. We do want a little bit there in case that was ha that was to slip. Now tying on the hook, I'm gonna just go ahead and tie the same knot I've been tying all along, because some of these knots have uh, stronger tensile strength than others. And if you're tying different knots in different spots, then you're basically saying at that spot that's what you want to break first. So if you'd rather the hook to break off to where you're not losing all of this, I would suggest tying a polymer knot here, a polymer knot here, and a polymer knot here, and then tying your fisherman's knot to this part right here. And one of the, one of the things that I know a lot of people take advantage of when using a Carolina rig is using a different uh, type of fishing line from the swivel to the hook you know whether it's a lot of times they'll use fluorocarbon because fluorocarbon does not reflect light so it it virtually makes the line invisible in the water which is a very good idea a lot of times they'll use a lighter line than they do on the main rig you know for the part of the purposes of that is to keep it from you know not being able to be seen as well So, there we go. I left that a little long. Let's try that again. So, there we go. We got the sinker, our bead, our swivel, our line, and our hook. All right. For the drop shot style of fishing, I may not be right wearing the right color shirt for to make this stand out. But that's when 
I will use something like a treble hook with a whole live bluegill. Now, some people may disagree with that, but I assure you, we've caught plenty of catfish that way right there. So in doing this style, I'll go ahead and use the treble hook for it. It's nice and big. And so there's a couple different ways you can do this. And I'll show you the first way that I learned. And it was really before I was started using the polymer knot quite a bit. And that is you take and you put your hook through the line and you go ahead and tie you a fisherman's knot. All right. So that's one. You see you have to deal with all that right there it's three and like many cat and like many fishermen do cat fishermen in particular you know you're out there fishing at night This can be a little bit daunting. So, we've successfully not hooked ourselves with the hook. We got it all on there. We got our loop. We're pulling this through. We're watching our, prevent ourselves from getting it tangled up in anything. And we definitely do not want to burn our line and have to do it all over again because when you're catfishing, you're expecting bigger fish, and a burnt line surely means a, a lost fish. So we have that on there, and then the next thing we're going to want to do, just like any good drop shot fisherman knows, is you're going to take your tag end and you're going to put it back through your hook. So whenever it's on there, it should help your hook to stand up, okay? Then we're gonna go and tie our sinker on. Now, with this type of sinker, I've had very bad luck with the Simple Fisherman knot. You definitely want, you definitely want to get that second wrap on here, be it the Fisherman's knot or a Polymer knot, because those knots will just pull out really easy on that big, on that big piece right there you're tying to. Get that right through the hole. Get that put on there. There we go. The line I'm using here is eight pound test. I may use it if I'm using smaller bait, but normally when I'm catfishing, I like 17 on my bigger rods and 12 on some of the rods now Once I get all that hooked up The next thing I do like to do I don't know if you can see it that well, but that line is a little bit burnt and you want to watch out for that You just see where it's like frayed That's it. So I'll take and dump my line up like that And just pull it right through The idea is if you're fishing with very much current that current's going to take and bring that bait up out here so whenever you're sitting and you got it tight that bait will be up it just won't be sitting against the line not doing anything you give it a little bit of room whether it's a bluegill it'll have a little bit of room to move over here a minnow even if it's just a, a chunk of cut bait if that current is very strong that that current will bring that bait right up and it'll just move nice and easy, very enticing. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw this in here real quick. And I'm gonna assume most of you guys know how to use a split shot. And I wouldn't suggest using your teeth to open them. Use a, you know, make sure you have plenty of tools with you. Use a, uh, you know, pair of pliers. You only, once you get to be an adult, you only get one set of teeth. Breaking it on some of this lead sinker is not going to do anybody any good. So you just take your line, you push it through, you push it through one more time, and then you just pinch that tight. And then you tie your hook to the other end, however far you want it. 
so hope you learned a few things if you already knew it or maybe you know a better way feel free to uh, let me know your better way whenever I tie now I, I mentioned I was just tying the simple fisherman's knot because I was showing you the hard way that I do this but nowadays normally when I tie this it's with a polymer knot okay I'm not tying it with that fisherman's knot almost never because of the tediousness of having to pull that to wrap that line around and I've seen people fish you know tie the fisherman's knot to where they spin it and spin it and spin it and then bring it through I'm just not in the habit of doing that I may have to try that one day you know it, it just may be so much better once I try it I'll really like it so no fishing this week probably a couple weeks ago I twisted my knee so I'm kind of grounded, although the doctor has only put me on limited stairs, I'm taking it upon myself to not be walking the banks and doing a lot of fishing because I, I do want to get back to 100% as fast as I can. And with that being said, even though I don't have nobody else here to talk to, I do want you to let, to let you guys know that even with the tour up knee, the best time to fish is any time you can go. And, and this being said, I just don't feel like it's the right time for me to go today, even though the weather is getting great. And I just really hate missing out on all of it. But I am happy to bring you guys a few of my little tricks here. Now, you may have seen these laying out here. When I'm bank fishing, and, and when I'm like bank fishing down in Grandview, there's lots of rocks. And replacing sinkers gets to be really expensive. So I'm going to let you know that any type of sinker will do. And the cheaper, the better. And with that, you guys have a nice day.